Reactions to Personal Tribulation Peter's Epistles Number 26 By Dr. Robert D. Luginbill Revised Translation of 1 Peter 1 6 through 9 In anticipation of this ultimate deliverance, your joy overflows, though at present it may be your lot to suffer for a time through various trials to the end that your faith may be shown to be genuine. This validation of your faith is far more valuable than gold, for gold, though it too is assayed by fire, ultimately perishes. But your faith, when proven genuine in the crucible of life, will result in praise, glory, and honor for you at the glorious return of Jesus Christ. Though you have never laid eyes on him, yet you love him. And though you cannot see him at this present time, yet you have faith in him. For this reason you rejoice with an inexpressible joy that bespeaks the glorious future to come, when you shall carry off in victory the ultimate prize, the deliverance of your lives, which is the very purpose and objective of this faith of yours. Introduction The historical examples of the persecution of believers discussed in our previous lesson, along with the predictions of the intense persecution to come in the time of the tribulation, should underscore the fact that our faith is going to be challenged here in the world. Whether the tribulation we experience will be of a strictly personal nature, or part of a more generalized persecution of our collective faith, we must at all costs hold on to that faith. We must at all costs hold fast to this anchor that secures us to eternity, for this and only this is the victory that can overcome the challenge of life and bring us safely home, namely, our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, Hebrews chapter 6 verse 19. Two reactions to intense suffering. Whenever disaster strikes, the personal tribulation of lesson number 25, it inevitably provokes a reaction from those it touches. The nature of this reaction is of especially critical importance when the victims of such personal disaster are believers in Christ. In such circumstances, our spirituality, our spiritual momentum and our spiritual growth are greatly affected by how we react to the crisis whether for good or for ill. Two basic reactions to intense suffering or personal tribulation are to complain about it. This is a natural enough human reaction, isn't it? In adversity, it is very easy to develop a bad attitude about life, about oneself, even about God. But reacting in a negative fashion to personal tribulation, as perfectly understandable as this is, is nevertheless a course fraught with spiritual peril. Especially in difficult times, God expects us to trust Him, not blame Him, and this is the essence of true humility. All of you gird on a humble attitude toward each other, for God opposes the arrogant, but gives grace to the humble. So humble yourselves under God's mighty hand, so He may exalt you at the proper time, and cast all your care on Him, for He cares for you. 1 Peter 5, 5-7 let us not put Christ to the test, as some of them, that is, the Exodus generation, did and were killed by serpents. And let us not complain, as some of them complained, and were killed by the destroyer. These things happened to them as an example to us, and were written to warn us, we who live at the culmination of the ages. So let him who thinks he stands firm beware lest he fall. You have not suffered any testing beyond normal human experience, and God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tested beyond your capacity, but will give you a way out along with the test, so that you can bear up under it. 1 Corinthians 10, 9 through 13 To embrace it, put our arms around suffering and personal tragedy? This is an entirely unnatural human reaction, isn't it? Better yet, it is a supernatural reaction, and the one we're commanded to have. Rather than getting negative and blaming our lot, Jude 16, we should strive in times of crisis to hold on even tighter to our faith in God's mercy and fairness, realizing that we cannot possibly understand all of His reasons for allowing adversity into our lives. Romans chapter 11 verse 33, and consider the example of Job. If we accept in a spirit of humility whatever comes from His hand, Job 2.10, and trust Him at these times when it is hardest to trust Him, we increase our spiritual momentum and accelerate our spiritual growth. In anticipation of this ultimate deliverance, your joy overflows. 
though at present it may be your lot to suffer for a time through various trials to the end, that your faith may be shown to be genuine. 1 Peter 1 6. And not only this, but let us glory in our tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces patience, and patience produces proven character, and proven character produces hope, and this hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. Romans chapter 5 verse 3 through 5. Consider it a genuine joy, my brothers, when you are beset with a variety of trials, knowing that this proof of your faith is producing patience. So let patience do its perfecting work, that you might be perfect and whole, lacking in nothing. James chapter 1 verse 2. In confronting intense suffering or personal tribulation, therefore the issue is essentially one of faith, of the patient exercise of faith, and of the preservation of one's faith, even in the face of difficulties we cannot understand and can hardly bear. And although we have previously discussed the doctrine of the perseverance of faith, see lessons number 13, 21, 24, and 25, we will take some time here to review the issue in summary form, for to write the same things to you, as the Apostle Paul says in a similar context, is not bothersome to me but is beneficial for your spiritual security, Philippians chapter 3 verse 1. The point about spiritual security is especially true in this case, since the issue in question is the protection of our faith under severe pressure. Reacting negatively to suffering, even blaming or questioning God, is obviously detrimental to our faith. But without continued faith in Christ, there is no deliverance, no salvation, no life after death. These are high stakes indeed, there are none higher. That is why we cannot afford to have any doubts about the necessity for the perseverance of our faith, or of the implications of the collapse of that faith under the pressures of the personal tribulations of this life.